once it gets a little bit less silly when you notice that our very best friend in the whole world is back on the ladder after a short hiatus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. He fucking added me back, so it's like sick. No way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's um, something I didn't have on my bingo card. Fucking. I, because it's like sometimes. You, votes don't really. Huh. I'll, I'll get one really good one in, I think, and then he'll probably pull out. Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed that, like, certain people like that like if i've beaten them several times in a row and i'm always going to give them you know my best shot like and i'm more often playing competitive decks like they're a little less uh emote spamish just because like they know they've got to be careful like or yeah if i have you on my me. fucking friends list buddy you're like what i mean right so it's like some people like most of the people that i add not most of them fair amount of them from the lab um <laughs> I add them because they fucking they you know they were spamming emotes or some stupid shit like that versus me like during the game and I'm just like add them and then yeah I add them to ask them what sometimes it's like they don't no I'm not away. talking about people on my friends list I'm talking like these people who I'm not friends with they know they're gonna I'm gonna take my time and like emote them back quite a bit and I, I'm gonna oh. win <laughs> more often than not and so like. Usually, they're dishing it up, can't take it, so, like, they... Yeah, there's a couple like of people like that. Beat... I, f I feel like I've noticed that it drops off a little bit. If I've won, you know, two, three, four games in a row against them, like, they don't want the smoke. They can dish it up, but they can't handle it. Yeah, that's, uh, there was a fucking guy, uh... I guess, I don't know, I first time I saw him was this... He was always like that, He'd be like, oh, apologies, apologies, like, saying shit, like... I'd be like making, I'd be like making my own play and like doing something, fuck anything up or whatever. And he wouldn't have anything to have for me. So fucking sit there and be like, oh. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're doing, bud, but like, whatever. And then I, you know, he'd be like in a good position. Like, say he has me like, eight, eight. he's playing prophecy battle. Oh, I'm like, okay. I'd oh, fill, I, and I'd gross. fill my board, and then I fucking, I'd go and swing for game, and you know. <laughs> necessary thing to do apologize for that <laughs> after he just sat there and fucking said sorry for the entire game so I was like, but apologies bud but yeah all the props in the world not I, this time i did that to him a couple times and he just stopped stopped emoting but he will disconnect on me <laughs> oh i don't know what i prefer really you know I'm immune to the whole disconnect thing. Like, I get why it would be frustrating for people, but I've said this before on this podcast, but, like, if I'm playing, like, I have time to play, and so who cares if I get to just sit there for two or three minutes and, like, savor the W and have a stress-free, you know, I'm basking in, like, the fact that I, just by playing the game, not by doing anything, you know, bad manners, I got under someone's skin, or they got under their own skin, and disconnected i'm like okay i'll take a two or three minutes of stress-free victory thank you <laughs> i suppose when you look at it like that it's like yeah but i mean like if it's the rare time i'm trying to get one game in on my like break at work if i'm actually having to work um or on my lunch oh, no or whatever way. like then it's like okay like i'm on a crunch you know i don't have the extra time right now but I feel like that's not all the time, but like, I think a lot. Or just like the general impatience of like, the ladder in general. I really expect games to be quicker. I expect people to be quicker than you. they are sometimes. I know I'm guilty for that sometimes. Like, it a little. Some people would. Yeah, but you're actually thinking your turn out. <laughs> the only times I'm ever taking a long time is like you or someone is chatting me while I'm playing against someone, so I'm like on mobile trying to type a response and I'm just taking my sweet time because of that. Not not because I'm like BMing or, no. you know, my, my boss comes over <clears throat> or something and I have to like, you know, just put my phone down for a, a second until I'm done talking to them or whatever, you know. Yeah, no, and then I can like pick it back up. It sucks trying like... to respond on mobile too, just in general, because it's not. Yes, it does. 
most of the time, if any of you ever like play against me or see me spectate me, whatever, I'm on mobile. Like my computer is the only times I'm on there is like for these episodes, or if I'm like not gonna play Destiny Two, I'm gonna play this when I get home from work and I happen to go on a PC. But sometimes I just want to like lay on the couch and have my phone, not have to like sit in front of my computer or whatever. I think that. Anyways. To uh, to be yeah. on our <clears throat> we are live primary topic, yeah. So this <clears throat> is life lessons with uh, Shadow <laughs> Azz and Aros dot NPO. The the life lesson we'll always remind you of at the beginning and end of these things is don't play workshop. Just <clears throat> don't do it. I think at this point, to. this point it should kind of go without saying. It's funny, like I'll be running like Dwemers or something. And something. Oh, you play in workshops? Like, no. <laughs> no. How do I have to be? I don't know if there's anybody that's more publicly like against it than I, I actually am, have really. a. I have a conscience and a soul. Why would I be playing workshop? <laughs> and a soul. But um, the topic that we are primarily going to discuss is one that I hope will be interesting to any listeners or viewers, and that is: is aggro or control stronger? Which of those deck archetypes has the advantage inherently, or do neither of them? And I mean, for the sake of that topic of discussion, we're probably kind of talking about like when they match each other, I'm assuming, not just in general. So head to head, you know, aggro well, head, head versus. Head, but like, I think we should also talk about like as a whole on the ladder in general. You're looking. At... Okay. Yeah, we can kind of. It is a factor. Sure. Yes. Um... I suppose, but, I mean, for people, I guess, that don't have the requisite time, we've mentioned, too, though, like, the fastest way is always going to be to, like, win at a yeah. very, yeah. as when high you... of a, like, win rate as you can. So if you're better with control, like, if you're better with control, like, do that. Even if the games are a little bit longer on average, like, you're going to get Legend or high legend faster just by winning more by the way speaking of like win streaks <laughs> i don't know if you've talked to a kizzle recently but he was in our like old m messenger facebook messenger chat that Najaro started a long time ago um and he was on like a 35 or 36 and one win streak oh yeah where was the one at in the middle somewhere in the middle well then it's not a win streak no i'm joking I mean that's wild. I don't know if I've that ever is a good, that is had a good streak though. A streak like, of games quite that good, honestly. Like <laughs> I can't remember. I know I went twenty two and zero like one time, but that's still probably not as good. Like ever had it where your entire history was W's? Um, I think I've probably always had like at least one loss like he did or whatever. Yeah, there's only one time it was with the goblin assassin crab deck. That you had thirty wins in a row? Like thirty fucking wild. There's a big fucking. I'm sure deck. there's, I'm sure there's decks out there that I kind of just choose not to play that I could probably do that with if I really wanted to, but I always just choose, you know, to play well, stuff that I don't too, consider. Right? You have to be... Oh, of course, absolutely. Yeah, getting, you know, it's not all. Some games are like, okay, you got that lucky top deck at the. I think that that's something. But also Best. luck in who you're matching. Like I've had stretches yeah, exactly. of games where I matched like Ross Pierre Dole twice, um, Juno <laughs> twice, like Endo once, you once, like my brother. I mean, just okay. Yeah. I'm gonna lose one of those games somewhere in there. Like yeah, no, it's just a given, really. If not, then you're on fire and Katana Rufus. I mean, there was there was days in the end towards the end of last month where I was matching like top 50 people like almost every game which was like awesome but also like very difficult to like get a streak going all right so acro versus control oh, one way that i kind of think okay. about the topic is like what are the cards that are like very clearly geared towards one or the other how many of them are there how good are they um I will say that aggro has some very, 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 very strong like cards that we've probably talked about that come to mind. 
um, that are like clearly like anti-control cards, um, you know, meant for aggro decks, or maybe even like mid-grow, you know, or mid, but primarily aggro. The difference to me, at least for that kind of like one category of the discussion or debate is I think there's more of those kind of cards in the game that are available to control. Because um, I'm thinking of like Garnag, Withered Hand, Cultist, maybe even that like red 2 cost 3 2 that like actions can't damage it. Although I wish it was like actions can't target it because like there's a lot of actions that can still hurt it or destroy it that aren't just doing a certain amount of damage or whatever, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Like, the cards that are, like, not targetable, I think, are more likely to survive than that, like, little red 2 cost 3 2 guy, which is, like, a really cool concept for a card, like, can't be damaged by actions, but some of the actions don't say damage, they say, like, destroy or, like, banish yeah. or, you know, bounce or whatever. So he can still get affected by those ones. But um, now when I think of like cards that are like control cards that are like designed to be anti-aggro, I feel like there's a lot, lot more that come to my mind. And again, like I'll ad acknowledge that like I am primarily an aggro mid grow player. And so like I have a very clear <laughs> bias that I have no problem like admitting to um, that I'll try to like, you know, take into account in this discussion. But like cards like Ice Storm, um, Debilitate, Fingers of the Mountain, um, all of the like prophecy cards in the game are pretty much designed to be anti-aggro. Now you can run them in any any deck. It doesn't have to be in control. They're good in all sorts of decks. But like when you add them to like drain and guards and removal actions that are already like kind of mostly anti-aggro cards, um, it kind of seems to me like there's more tools in the toolbox for control. Now, people could make the argument, and I would say it's probably somewhat valid, that like aggro is very strong early on and can snowball, so there needs to be like a lot of tools to kind of game, because control could draw their high end and have just no options unless they hit prophecies or whatever. So I kind of get that, like the game is always starting at one Magicka, not like, you know, 12. So like if your curve is lower, you have a higher chance of being able to actually play cards right away. So that's one advantage I would say aggro has. But what do you think of any of that stuff I've been saying so far? Well, <clears throat> I guess it kind of goes down to like the whole efficiency bit. Um, like there are decks that are just like Ooh. inherently efficient. Uh, like for instance, Burnus Ass. Telvani. <laughs> well, sure. On, on one end, you have, like, Burn Assassin, right? Burn Assassin, like, every card in the deck is basically, like, going to do damage. Uh, not only are they doing damage, they're also healing. So they're good against other aggro decks. Like, like Battle Mage. Everything is low cost. Doesn't heal normally. Everything is low cost. Yep. Like, Trader comes out for two, and it's a four. Right? So its stats are better than cost. Thing. Stuff like, uh, into, like, more of, like, Archer or like a battle mage, you have like I mean I know it's not a great, but Bog Lurcher for instance, you have uh, Bring Ogrim. You have cards that are coming down for mana. Yeah, uh, red has a lot and of they're, and they're doing stuff like that. They're they're higher attack than the mana that you spend, and as you get closer to like the mid range, like if, after you hit like about five six, they kind of drop off to be about either less than or <clears throat> about the same amount of the. In terms of efficiency, I think that aggro has the advantage in that. Um, and yeah, I know that the, some of the effects that you get make up for it, like Necromancer, for instance, or every fucking purple deck fucking right. good card, right? Um, <laughs> it allows you with a lot of op It gives you a lot of options. If you actually have any buffs for it, then it gives you even more options. Which makes it totally ridiculous compared to play, right? Alfeek, for instance, is Powered because it's a fucking three three guard and he has the potential to summon a seven five ward for six mana. Now I'm not gonna say how is a, it's not an aggro card, but in no. terms of like mid grow, like it's definitely more of a mid range card because it is a little slow. But that'll it's, always it's be the top end of like blue mid grow big, decks. It's a big tempo swing. Well, and it's hard for control to deal with. Like 
Exactly. There's not a lot of options that Telvanni has specifically. Like maybe Ebonheart um, has, you know, a way around that or something, but well, Telvanni struggles with the only thing that they could really use, but it's, then it's Mummify and then something else. You... Right. It's, it's always like a two card like, answer. If you played it on turn six, like they have either six or seven Magicka if they have Ring and they haven't ramped. Even if they've ramped, maybe eight at the most. Three for Mummify is down to five now they can't play ice storm on top of that like to deal with anything else and that's just one creature you probably have some other stuff on board if you're running like a blue mid grow deck like typically because the wards will help them survive etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah which yeah talking about wards actually other thing is like all the warded creatures are actually pretty daggerfall mage ward crafter which can give everything a ward you have the fucking the spell the item sixth house amulet very true. If, hits, if your hit, creature hits five attack, which is perfect for cards like I Mammoth, like that card. It's just um, Mammoth, I put that in a lot of decks, uh, and then I find myself Raider. like cutting it for some reason. Yeah, probably cut it because you top deck it. And you have no creatures in hand. It sucks because <laughs> it it's sticks a in your mind. Yeah, that it's one a shitty, time. It's, yeah, it's a shitty feeling too. Stupid. Gonna so happen. you are talking about efficiency as in like the the kind of relation between how much magic it costs early on and then how much attack power you're getting out of the card, right? In particular, like that in the in this example it's basically like the amount of damage it produces versus the amount of magic that it essentially. Okay, right. And that's something that I'm very like and was very conscious of when I was like building and kind of fine tuning burn. Because I would take cards like, let's say, Sedanine Courier, two Magicka, three damage, right? Yeah. And then that's why I included one of that charge if there's a wounded creature in your lane or whatever guy. Go the, um, tracker? Yes, because again, two Magicka for three damage to face. Like, you always want to kind of get, like, less Magicka for one or more, you know, damage than you're actually paying. Because sometimes... You get to like turn five or six, and you were like one magic is short or one damage short, and so card short. So cards like that can help you get that one extra damage you need to close out a game. Because if you don't, then control can stabilize and start draining and all this crazy stuff. When I think of efficiency in regards to this particular topic, I think kind of of like magicka efficiency. Like, oh, what is like the hit most? Alter, it's pretty much ridiculous. Very hard to. Even with even without alter, like the fact that you can, um, Tavani's already trying to like kill their creatures anyways, right? Like they get to draw cards if some of them die. They get health if they have um. Yeah, like full up. fire bloom. But then be, is it gonna be like? <laughs> no, I'm but... I'm thinking of like the bane of my existence as an aggro player is actually not fire bloom. It's um. I can't. Imagine. Death scythe. Death. Oh, death scythe. scythe. Oh, death scythe is rough. Because. Like, normally, like, before that kind of loop came into being, for a long time in this game, like, you didn't necessarily really get rewarded in so many different ways all at once for, like, killing your own creatures. You would want your creatures to survive so they could keep either trading or, like, hitting face or whatever. So, it's so insanely magicka efficient to be able to play a one-cost action that can not only do a bunch of damage to a creature that may have survived your Ice Storm that you already played, but then drains for, like, sometimes absolutely insane amounts of health. And you can play... I've seen people do two or three of them the same turn and go from, like, one health to, like, 22 health or something, <laughs> yeah. removing their opponent's whole board. And it's like, that is almost too many things to be able to do that all help you and all hurt your opponent for, like, not all that much Magicka, especially if you've already been ramping or whatever. Like, so... There's, like, the efficiency of how much damage are you getting out of your, like, Magicka early in the game. And then there's kind of, like, the other side of efficiency. Like, what insane stuff are you able to do for, like, a low amount of Magicka that seems like you shouldn't be able to do so many things for just, like, what seems like a little amount of Magicka or whatever. is like, I guess, those are both devil's advocate kind of things to each other, I suppose. Well, they're, like, the tit for tat, right? Like, if you have all this ma damage you can do for cheap like i don't know for instance in the move assassin that's why move is such a strong deck in general is because everything yes. is everything in move is like under costed all the move cards are under costed they all if you depending on if you have the smuggler down then you're doing you're hitting oh stats my goodness and doing yeah damage big damage so 
like yeah it's almost like synergy that's been power crept right like yeah that's why i like like for instance people will kind of shit on me for trusty sword because they but it's like i never have but it's like you look at trusty sword and it's like one of those cards that's like you're only ever going to use it with with strike or you're using it to buff the creature so that it gets past the I think it's cool to use it with, like, Skulk. Yeah, well, actually, I have made decks Personally. around that where it's just Swift Strike and Skulk will grab my truck. Like that. Yeah, do cool Oathman. stuff like that instead of just only, <clears throat> only like, <throat> Goblin Scout, you know, finding your curses or whatever. Like, everyone already has done that. Do something cool like Trusty Sword with Skulk. <laughs> uh, or Fire Blooms. Or Fire Blooms even cooler, even... Even cooler is find the zero cost um the guy that like makes a zero cost copy Rana? of himself and shuffles it into your no um oh elusive schemer. the like sneak sneaky guy yes elusive schemer that's like big brain skulk play right there <laughs> this podcast by the way as a like random aside is making me realize how bad I am at remembering the names of like cards in this game. I'm just really weirdly good at it. Well, that's why we're a good team. Yeah. <laughs> if, if if for nothing else, then that's, that's part of it. All right. So, what other ways are there of talking about aggro versus control? Which one has the advantage if one of them does? Um. I mean, you touched on it the a tiny games, bit, but like obviously, the amount of games you can play with an aggro deck. Sure. Control deck. If you're good with one or the other, like good with aggro. I'm glad you said if you're good, <laughs> because yeah, yeah to... for for a player who's not good, like this, they're just gonna get stay in the snake, you know, faster than they otherwise would have. I guess like they're just gonna, you know, keep staying in the snake like more often or more amount of times than they would normally, like if they can't win anyways. So like yeah, like you said, for good players. Um, it is a more efficient climb if you can have a high win rate playing aggro because the games tend to end quicker. Um, not always the case, like, but on average for sure. And I mean that's part of like overall ladder strategy, I guess. Like, and just that's not for like an individual game, but more for like over the course of a season you can play probably. A lot more games on aggro, maybe if you need to, in order to like achieve a high rank or whatever your goal might be. But I think it's a uh, kind of a fallacy that some people have bought into in this game that like you need to play a ton of games in order to like achieve a good rank. That's not actually true at all. Like I've seen people like we were just talking about with a Kizzle or whatever, and you and I have both had wild streaks, and we know a lot of good players can just go on crazy streaks sometimes. Like if you do that. Those 20 or 30 games that you win in a row, basically, or maybe with one or two losses in there, is like the equivalent of like a week of playing for someone else for them to rank up the amount that you're going to over the yeah, course like of that if I, streak. Yeah, like if I was to go on like a streak right now, if I went where I'm at right now, 50s, if I went on a streak of say 20 games from here, then essentially I would be far fell. I'd be like within the top. I went on like a plus twenty win. Then from there, it's yeah. Like, but if you're only on winning, match, like, yeah. Depending on who I match, usually it, within the top ten. If I'm match, if I'm matching other top ten players, and it's like three or four wins until matching other hundred or what the number. Oh, and it depends if someone's been like you know really grinding for that one spot or not, but. Yeah, no. If they if they're in one and they they thinking wins, it's always. I mean, that's kind of how it should be, though. I mean, theoretically, like you want it to mean something if you're able to capture that top spot. At least I do. All right. What other kind of angles are there to look at this whole aggro versus um, control? How about like if we if we talk about like just 
I mean, for players who are just starting off, they're going to find it easy to play aggro. That's definitely true. That is 100% true. I'll agree with that. And it's definitely it has a less more affordable of a deck. high learning curve. Definitely a more affordable deck. Yeah, usually, yeah. I'm not going to say every single time, but like for the most part, in aggro, it's No, more more commons in more commons per it's no uh fucking there's more commons that usually a, in, are seen in aggro decks than yeah, in control ratio one that's interesting that you brought up that part of it because I think control does have like a lower floor while also having a higher higher ceiling than aggro does and like i don't know if you I'm kind of have heard things described that way before but um what that means as far as i'm aware is that like the potential power level is higher um especially if you really are a good player and are very familiar with how to play control and you've practiced it a lot but also Aggro has a higher baseline, just like level of like being good because it's not going to draw bad as often and it doesn't have as many like bad matchups per se because at the end of there the day, less, like there's less opportunity for it to draw bad. You curves you low six, right? right. Kind of end your curve at and five, like, and it's like it's not as reliant on like synergy and stuff like that, usually, depending on yeah, how you don't you have build to draw it. multiple cards to make combo work or to make kind of go in exactly. Your... And like the order that you draw them in doesn't matter quite as much because, like, in control and even mid, but like in control, like you definitely want to draw in a certain order, like if you can. And Mulligan's going to be like a little more important and stuff. So, um, that being said, though, like. I think control definitely has the potential to be like more powerful in the hands of a skilled player like overall just the kind of crazy things it can do like like you've said before with like ox i don't even know if that's like really a control deck but like we've talked about telvani and evan i would argue that ox anything is, it, it is a control deck i mean in terms of it being control but like i wouldn't consider it like it's not like the average tell like there's kind of splitting hair. there's not as many there's not as many circumstances with aggro decks where they're like quite literally unbeatable as there are with decks like that. Like if you draw the right cards and like set it up and like are able to kind of survive, I guess, to that point, like control decks, like your ox after a certain point, it's like, there is no beating it. Like it's just, yeah. it's literally within, not within the realm of like the laws of physics to, to win past a certain point. Whereas that's not really true very often for like aggro per se. Um, in well, aggro, it depends on if they have like the fucking if they have their wicked start with like say. Uh, yes, you know, which is called a high roll, right? Like. Oh well, yeah. Empire aggro. If they draw like, fifth legion trainer and then a bunch of zero and ones and buff them all and then like, before, ice storm they manage to get a fervor up or something. It's like okay, you just that's, to quote you, that's curtains like. Yeah. Well, it's fucking. <laughs> I think there is more nuance to the whole kind of like topic than I probably would have assumed. Um, and it's interesting to try to suss, suss that out for me, as everyone who knows me or knows of me knows that I'm very much an aggro person, well, player at heart. And I... I have played control before. I have built control decks before, very few and far between. So it's not like you know I have zero experience with it. It's definitely not my cup of tea, um, for whatever reason. Like I think those kind of control mirrors or like control versus mid games that can go on for and on and on until someone finally gains the advantage feels so bad to me if you end up losing them. Which again, like I'm not like a great control player, so it's more likely than not that if it's a close one like that, I may not end up on top like I do if I'm on my my strong suit of aggro or mid grow or even mid. Um, but again, like, what do you think, this isn't super somewhat on topic, but like, what do you think it is, like, personality-wise that makes people kind of gear towards either aggro or, like, control? 
I find that fascinating to like think about. Um, <laughs> I not think, to put you on the spot or anything. I think in general, people that like to control. So what, more cerebral or something like. I'm just thinking like some of the people I know that play like hard can assholes. <laughs> I mean, um, hey, you won't get an argument from me on that as an aggro player. <laughs> I mean, just in general. I've like, always they're, felt... They're fucking pricks, man. I don't know why. I've always felt, and I could be wrong about this, I would like to hear whether you agree or not, but I've always had this feeling like control wants there to be no way for them to lose. Like, they don't want it to be, like, a actual close match where, like, it's back and forth and, like, either person could oh, win. Yeah, they're, setting their, they're, they're setting up their They're setting up their deck... They're setting up their deck in a way to, like, literally not even let the other person have a chance to win, which is like, well, yeah, like, if you want to win, that's probably what you should do. But Very like, domineering, though. It's like, I actually prefer games that are close, because winning a close one, it feels like maybe some of my experience and skill was able to, like, tip the scales in a 50-50 match towards me. Whereas if, like, my opponent can't even keep a creature on the board for more than one turn, and I have, like, 79 health, and, like, a hundred cards in my <laughs> hand and they're out of cards but like, yeah it doesn't like, even feel like a competition not actually that fun like sure i would want to do that to my brother like he did to me when i was new to the game but like you know to random people out there that i don't even know it's like that's a war crime or something that's illegal in most of the u.s states or whatever like <laughs> i don't know what you guys do up there in canada but besides not watching disney movies ever apparently yeah i don't know where you got that from <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just going to be a thing I reference sometimes now. I don't remember how this far fouls person got on my friends list, but I matched them recently, and I think they beat me. Keep on, like which... I don't know. I have them on my alt, but they don't fuck it. They won't add me on this, and it's weird. I don't know why they decided to do. They just don't look at their friend request. I was like fucking singing my praises on. Oh yeah, he was playing was the singing. same deck earlier today against me. It seems pretty similar to that one I was trying to make work that wasn't really working, but I think it'll work better in Halali, like that I was kind of under the hood. By the way, I made some of those changes that you uh, suggested. Oh, yeah? I think it should be pretty spicy. But yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I maybe you don't consider yourself like a control player, maybe more of a combo and just you know meme sort of mid range player. I don't know. I think one night Dark Wolf said that to me the other day. That's such a control player move, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, it kind of is, isn't it? I, I kind of started <laughs> thinking about it more. It's like I guess like more geared toward control. Like even if I'm playing like an aggro game. If Versus another aggro deck, I will always be the first one to take control of control. Unless my hand is just a mm -hmm. banana. Uh, for the most part, like I, I'd rather, I rather trade than. Or, it's like mm -hmm. little things like that that kind of make. I guess. Yeah. Control. Not some. I couldn't sit there with a fucking oh. altar Telvani and, like, you know, play out the entire altar. And, yeah, this is fun. Like, no. Cycle through all 75 of your cards and then journey or whatever. <laughs> like, Yeah, man. Fuck that. That's some story. Like, I mean, if I'm looking to journey, if I look to play journey, I'm looking to cheat it out. Like, I'm looking to, like, play crabs right. with it or something so that I can, like, you know, yeah. do, like, the fake little crab conscriptions and, like, you know, maybe do two of those True. and then, like, you know, maybe some cards in my hand I'll discard them or whatever and then I journey. Not, like looking to play Shit. let me Every know game um Holy at some point and that's too that's <laughs> too much too much how do you sit there and do that every game i don't know i don't know bro let me know at some point if you want to switch to potentially 
myself playing some games with that new deck or whatever. Oh, go for it, but man. I'm if you want to play games, like I'm so per- pretty sure people are getting a little tired of watching me get my ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, so I'll show off this deck I made today that I'm pretty excited about. Maybe it will suck, but hopefully not. Tosca was asking me earlier because I was playing it, and he's like, oh, I never see you play Dragons. And I was like, yeah, it's actually Shadow. I kind of fucked around with it. I can make it better or tinker with it a little bit anyway. Sure. Something I did was I took out X. That's a very A Ross move. Yeah, like a things I ended up didn't lose any game. Very nice. And he was like asking me no, about alternate he was twenty eighth like dot feb. Alternate win conditions. He's like, Does it have anything other than rage and that has the some wound tech and shit like that and I guess that wasn't good enough. Like, I don't know if he just didn't consider that like an alternate condition or whatever, but like, kind of have some, some decks don't have a fucking obvious guaranteed win condition. Like, you don't have to play a certain card and have that be like, oh, fucking, you played that card, it's fucking game over. I mean, yeah, taking so over some, the board and like, yeah, some cards, the decks will just win, win by having board, you know? In and fact, this deck most also decks has that are good, on, like, on, like, which I mean, is a draw engine. Um, into eternity potentially. But yeah, that's I would definitely. Um, is that like all decks have to have a fucking card, you know? Card where they play it and then. I would argue that decks that are like that, like very much like one particular card in it, played that card and it. Have cards yeah, that built I mean, besides maybe maybe, maybe Garnag or Belly G, but yeah. Yeah, but it's usually that, and then it's something else, and it's something else on top of it that's going to win them the game. It's not like played Belly G at 30 HP, and your opponent's just like, well, fuck, you know, I lose the game now. <laughs> you know what I mean? This always this always happens to me, but I just drew a Brotherhood, I think, right was after. it two turns after playing a Golem or whatever? This always happens to me? Oh my, oh my goodness. I feel kind of bad. I always feel bad when I do shit like that. I'm not even gonna lie. It never happens for me. But before I forget, I was having a thought about the like aggro risk control thing I wanted to bring up. I don't know if you've experienced this or not, but like the times I've tried or just played mid troll or control, um, yes, there have been those times. <laughs> I have felt, and it's kind of ironic because the word control, I felt very like not in control when I match aggro or mid grow, like. It feels like I'm always just on my back foot, always reacting to what they're doing instead of making them react to what I'm doing. And like when I've when I get close to stabilizing and close to running them out of cards, they always, always, always seem to draw what they need to finish me off. They always seem to like top deck or you know like the two cards they have in hand are just enough for lethal or whatever. And so that feeling of like helplessness, like not being able to stop them for me is like the worst and i hated it um yeah it sucks and so that part of like why i lean more towards like aggro mid grow even like mid or whatnot um but i mean so i'm this sure is kind it feels of, great when you is... pull off like a really cool combo or whatnot like or when you your control deck works the way it's supposed to and you like just dominate someone and whatnot yeah, but it doesn't happen very often, especially if you're against somebody who's actually like on a good aggro. Usually, you have to kind of string the game out a little longer, like and kind of actually sure ability before. Or I'm sure like, it feels great oh, if someone's able YOLO. to beat someone like. I'm sure it feels great for a control player if they're able to beat like a a well known like really good aggro player or whatever like who's literally trying to just stop what they're doing and can't do it like. Yeah, basically, I'm just gonna gain life. And then, you know what I mean? It's like every aggro mm-hmm. player in the world hates that Campbell. Like, oh my goodness! <laughs> I fucking I just can't even can't even with that guy. Uh, so I don't even consider myself an aggro player. <laughs> Here's a question for you, and I mean, you may not have like an actual way to answer it with 100 percent accuracy, but like over any given kind of like 
amount of time in the last like six months, two years, or two years, however long, like we want to go back. What is the breakdown you would say of like aggro versus control that you're running into? Is it like 50 50? Is it more of one or the other? And if so, why do you think that is? Like if one is more prevalent than the other in like the ranks that you're playing at, I guess. Um. <laughs> I'd say when I'm matching people in the top, like, so, or so range that I'm fighting, or at least it feels the range. Maybe it could be like you know an aggro that's kind of like <clears throat> normally. If I'm matching good players, though, most of the good players are on a, some some fucking version of. Not a whole lot of people at I the high have, levels are. I should have played a Nasi in field lane. Not a whole lot of people in higher rank are playing like hard aggro, hard control. But for the most part, you know, going too far to one side of the spectrum of either uh, way is letting yourself into the opposite yes yep especially in the high ranks so i think it depends like if i'm playing against people that are high, higher in the rank really it's mid-range um in general though it's like on the climb up like get to legend i would say it's probably more aggro especially at the beginning Fighting against products yeah. like Goblin, Climber, or shit like that. Like, just stuff that, like, basically goes wide and rant. Or... They go wide and then they buff. Buffs. Whether it's tokens, yep. whether it's fucking Climber, which is another factor. You see some burn, token. too, though. I mean, like, whether it's Assassin, Battle Mage. It's usually Assassin. Hyper Archer. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the whole the most part, like, Prophecy you know, Battle Mage. <laughs> move is. Oh my god. Especially goodness. when people make videos about their move that's deck the only, and then they fucking post the... the move deck on YouTube <laughs> for everybody to talk to, for everybody to see. Oh man. And they do really well with that move deck, the, you know, the season prior, so everybody's like, oh, look at that. Oh man, I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> sorry, not it's funny. sorry. It's funny because <laughs> I, I don't like move. I'm very much don't like move even though it's aggro it's like probably the only aggro that i like don't like i mean maybe you could consider goblins aggro i'm not a big fan of those anymore i was when they very first came out because i kind of like helped several people kind of like make the version that kind of stuck um but i quickly realized after a few months like man this is too strong like skirmisher is overpowered like although i've been beating it a lot recently i don't know about you but Yeah. I mean, it depends on who you're fucking playing against that's playing Goblin. Usually the way it is. It's never the deck you're playing against. Like, well, I'm not going to say it's never the deck. It's not usually the deck you're playing against. It's usually the person that's playing the deck that makes it. Obviously, like, there are decks that are just inherently stupid and that will you will lose to, especially if you're playing a, de a deck like Assassin, for instance, that doesn't normally carry like yeah. support removals. You're going to lose to fucking that nope. idiot playing or fucking workshop. Yeah. Right? No, it, it yep. is. It, it just it happens. It's, it's shitty and it feels bad and it sucks. But you're not gonna put your fucking three vicious drews in your fucking ox combo deck. <laughs> no, it just doesn't. They don't no, fit. They don't fit. So no, that's just a bad matchup you're gonna have to fucking deal with. It sucks. Okay. Yeah, but I, basically, I'm saying like you know, get play. <clears throat> and play some of these decks, and that's why we don't like them, guys. By the way, it's not that you, you know, it's not because the decking itself is inherently overpowered. Because like, yes, there are a lot of decks in the power, or a lot of combos or synergies that I don't particularly like in general. But it's when you mix the really bottom shit with a lot of so many other options. That that's what we always talk about. Yeah, like those caliber of players could win with way cooler, less broken and toxic decks, but they choose not to for whatever reason. Like, and like honestly, and that's the thing. There are people that I will. 
ever play. Clearly, this is real. Get it, and it sucks. That Same with Invade players, probably, that are new to the game or whatnot. Yeah, and that's the thing, though. Like, Invade is kind of shoved down your throat. Yeah, you get more of those packs like when Especially you first start playing it, or whatever. When it was like, yes. Packs. Well, yeah, because it was the last expansion. Every like, three it was win the last streak DLC was. That... Yeah, every three win streak was an invade pack or not an invade pack, but it was like an invade card from the Jaws of a Boot. You know, every yep. pack you got from winning, or arena, they were all invade. You know, basically, the game just shoving invade down new players' throats, which is like, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day. Like something like Workshop is like the way I look at it, if you're playing Workshop, you you know what you're doing wrong and you know you're being a fucking asshole by and doing it. Doing because it you have to anyways. seek that card out, you have to craft it, because chances are it's not you, you didn't get it for a month. Right? No. So you have to seek it out, you have to craft it. It had to have happened to you in such a way that like, oh that shit's busted. Right? So you not only are you fucking building this card and seeking a deck that you know is clearly broken. But you're looking to play it and perpetuate that shit on the ladder. Like, that's just, oh man, fuck off. Like, stop it. You know, that's, that's my fucking my quarrel with Workshop. Kind of an added layer of why it upsets me. Players know damn well what they're doing. Less I. Like I'm, I'm not here to fucking give any anybody a fucking moral like. As far as like the whole, you know, like I said before, you don't have to play the game that I want. Game, you know, I don't have to like the way you play the game. But you best fucking bet if I run into you and you're playing Workshop, I'm gonna fucking talk to you. Oh, about you're it. gonna get a uh, welcome friend, <laughs> or something. Yeah, fucking I'll your house. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll bring me. Slam your oh phone. man. Uh, no, but like this whole thing is like is like poltergeist. Yeah, no, the whole thing is is like I I don't know. I like playing the game. I like playing stupid, funny, weird. But sometimes I like playing competitive deck. Amount of decks in all. Be like two of them have like altar of despair. Cards that. I think Alter's a cool card. I just think that it's overdone in Tel. Yeah. Like if you're gonna play like an Alter Tel, when was again, the last time you saw already, Alter Tel that was? They're based already trying like, to. Right. That, well, the like, torturer. Yeah. You know, that's whenever I made when I right. when I made a Tel Vani Alter deck and it was based around Eager. That's a fun deck, you know. Cool deck, you know. You never see it. Um, and one card, you know. Last time you saw Eager Torture on the ladder. Ever. Well, and again, like, the the normal, stereotypical Telvani, like, they're already... It's already their goal to sacrifice or kill their own creatures. We don't need to give them health for doing it. Like, they're already getting card draw out of it and all this other stuff. Okay, like, no, that, that that's a problem with Necromancer's Amulet. And I will make that one, too. Necromancer's Amulet, in, like, most things. Huh. Yeah, but, but it's it's definitely the worst in there are Kalani, cards, like there are decks that I run that do run it Necromancers, but none of them are nearly as effective as that. Like they don't get as nearly as, as much mileage like the, out of it. As far as the breakdown of like how much aggro versus control I see, like in my games from month to month or whatever, um. I'm trying to make sure I'm not like having the bias where, you know, the ones that stick out more in my mind because I lost to like a really cancerous Telvani or whatever, and I'm remembering that more than I remember other stuff or whatnot. But I'm trying to think, like, I feel like I probably see more. I would say between aggro and migro, I would see more of that than just control. For sure. The control ones like are always harder matches for me. <laughs> um, than like 
I don't know, mid troll or mid or other aggro, unless it's like a hard counter like burn assassin against my burn battle mage or whatever. But um, it depends on the kind of control too, I guess. Like, cause if it's like a greedy ramp, I have a great chance of beating it. Um, I am loving how this deck is performing against Talvani, by the way, so far. Yeah, it looks like you went. So I am not a big fan of Talvani. As is well documented. I think that you're not a fan Ooh, of that particular Sunny fucking. Chatham. I think you're not a fan of that particular Talvani deck. I don't think you actually have. Well, that's the ninety percent of the time or more is the only Talvani I ever see. Spy Master, get out of here! With that kills one of my creature with Ice Storm, gets Merrick out of it. Watch him unite the houses. <laughs> <laughs> he got oh, the yellow for it too, man. That's the thing is like he's actually sitting there. He's, if, he, if he played Insane. like a if he played a fucking cat's paw or something, like he could unite. Oh fuck it, dude! I think oh, I might have sick. something here with this deck. I mean, it's very a very small sample size, but like, oh, I mean, I good. haven't lost with it. You said you said you didn't lose with it, like. No. Oh, there was a close game against. Do you want to uh, play? Do you want to play one against each other with I, with me on it and you on something that would maybe be like a good test for it or something? Uh, sure. What are my final closing thoughts on the whole aggro versus control? I I'm just gonna say that I, I don't think, think that there will. In particular, the game is definitely a little more geared toward aggro. I can see that in some ways, like that are not that are about other things than just like which is stronger or which has like a direct advantage head to head. Like I can definitely see that. I don't think they necessarily have like an advantage or whatever in particular. I just think that the game is more geared toward it, and that it's like it. Way that. What's crazy then, though, is like why do you see so much control? Like if that's the case, that's the part that I has given me cognitive dissonance like why do you see or maybe i just because see the control shit is cooler like... to do hmm like sorry like no no there's no cool aggro combo no when was the last time you saw a cool aggro combo it's people that are like aggro and they do a combo they think they're fucking playing skirmisher on a board full of goblins is a not a fucking combo <laughs> sorry it's like fucking... i think there are just some like, like just like workshop and Titan is not a combo. It's a stupid fucking broken mechanic. Really, at the end of the day, is what it is. That's true. That is very true. Yeah, I think what the criteria for what makes an aggro deck like cool or unique or creative is like more limited than for control. Um, but I do think there are aggro players out there who have done some neat things and still been within the rounds of like aggro or mid grow for sure. But yeah, I mean, really, the whole the whole collection of cards is kind of at your disposal. Well, mostly when you're when you're building a control deck, not quite the case. Like you're not going to be running, you know, like Odiving in an aggro deck, probably. I mean, no, you but you, you would probably slot in a rage or something like. That. But rage yeah, is, I mean, is a thing. You, yeah, you don't have to view it only as a defensive card. Like you can view it as like That's if extra I've got something on my with breakthrough, breakthrough you know what I mean, absolutely. like. <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah i've tried running one or even two i think in like a mono red before um but with mixed results I guess, I guess. that's all good um yeah no I'll come i think that in most cases people are actually looking to get like a win with looking to bend the people yeah, off. that is like unless you're talking like yeah. even heart and which case, I mean, even after they rage with Night Talon Lord, usually it's like it's not actually, but it's usually the beginning of the end. Yep, yeah, it's only a matter of time. Because that's beyond stabilizing and, you know, taking all the tempo. Plus that's like... 60 or more health, and then it's like stealing every creature <laughs> on their fucking side of the board, and also if they have a summon crazy. ability, stealing their summon ability. Absolutely but crazy. It is wild. 
too much. Yeah, but it requires it requires a little more setup than just like literally drawing Workshop and Titan. Like, well, yes, of course, I'm not. Yeah, like that. that they're not even comparable. Or just or whatever. Decks. Like, just two decks are not yeah. even close to being comparable. I just want to, you know, keep it in perspective. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this guy. Well, I mean, I know we feel different like about like. Either. Really? Oh yeah, no. First time I ever played him, he emoted me because he. And he hasn't beaten me since. And I think it's really starting to get to him. Yeah, <laughs> disconnect or oh my, oh my goodness. I swear to I, I don't know if I've ever matched Like this guy. six or seven games in a row now I've beaten him. And me like. Get him to a point where I'm in. And why? Like, God. <laughs> Even when he's just like, you know. I guess one time he did it, at least he passed it over disconnected. Yeah, that's what, what I point? don't understand is I don't when people, when people do that on, is... on my turn when I have lethal or something, it's like, okay, like you didn't waste any of my time. Like, Good, a good thing, that's a good thing. If you're going to do it, then that's the way to fucking do it. Yeah, but then Start what's the point of even doing it then? Like, Why not oh. just concede then? Like, Do it. I, I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, because it's not oh, like you get man. you don't save rank from, from no losing you rank. <laughs> oh man, so funny sometimes. Rank or anything? Yes, they absolutely. <clears throat> <clears throat> Can you imagine them? I'd be so I'd be so interested to see some kind of like scientific study, case study, or something. If someone could, in an alternate reality make it happen yeah of like no just like what kind of personality trait or like character trait or what part of like someone's background or upbringing turns them into like an aggro player or a control player like <laughs> god <laughs> that's fucking because deep it's not there. it's not one particular thing like it's not just that oh aggro players are a small brain you know smork like they can't think of anything else like i have my bachelor's degree i scored as high as it's possible to score on the army like you know intellect tests and whatnot like among other ways of quantifying intelligence and you know cerebralness but, but he's like, trying to say definitely... he's not a fucking idiot guys but he does prefer aggro <laughs> so yeah, there's not. I don't think there's probably just one thing like I that. I think you know, in, a, in separates... a lot of ways, aggro can be more of a puzzle than control. Like, and it sucks. It, it's especially difficult in, with some sort or with some kinds of aggro where it's like you are on a timer. If you don't win by a certain point, then you're probably not gonna. Win. Yes. Well, and like, I really like kind of over the years how I developed. Not just my Burn Battle Mage deck, but like the way that I kind of like pilot it in a way that might not be super intuitive to someone who's trying it out for the first time or whatever, if they haven't watched how I play it. Like you kind of can save your actions instead of just automatically hitting face with them and like remove enemy creatures that you need to. And you kind of have to be judicious, even though it has a lot of silence, holding on to that silence, even if you want to play it earlier for just the right moment when they put down Hand of Dagoth or whatever, and you have it in hand then, and you can just win based on that. Like, And again, like knowing when to trade, when to push, like it's not as simple as it might seem. Like People can probably think of aggro as like just a simple you know, deck with not a whole lot of like nuance to it or whatnot, but um, I think that's a good point you made. Like, Maximizing, maximizing damage yes. is not... Is not uh... Especially in <clears throat> certain matchups. Yeah, maximizing damage isn't necessarily always a black and white. No. Sometimes it's... Well, and like, aggro mirrors are really intense. Like, when you get into a race, like, and you... It, I know Rufus uh, was talking about this in some video um, when he had recorded a match between me and him when he was on his um, move assassin and I was on burn battle mage. Like, and I chatted him, you know, during the game, like, this is so intense. Like, I'm so <laughs> close. I'm one damage off right now. Like, but I mean, I'm sure you are too. Like, and his, you know, commentary in the video recording on that, like, interaction was, like, really funny, but also interesting how, like, 
aggro like hyper aggro mirror matches like come down to like the thinnest of margins sometimes um where like so fast someone can build up like lethal and you might not even see it coming or whatever but you have to like and you have to like find a way to prevent it or to like kill them first basically like but also like i've been playing more mid this month and like i think mid mirrors are super interesting also like they're so back and forth and like people kind of not wanting to break that first rune which is not the case in aggro um until they get the advantage but then you run the risk of your opponent playing wilds incarnate which you're both running probably but they might draw it first or vice versa and then whoever can get their alfix out first and start summoning the big atron i love how you say like, alfix like mid all mid-range decks are inherently good <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people think that, like, that's all that people run for mid. It's not the case, but I know City Toker said that, like, oh, all mid is only running Alphique and whatnot. Like, well, blue well, mid range, There's yes. other colors, too. But, uh, yes. And blue mid range is, like, and its own marker. thing, right? Well, yeah, I think, blue. Hey, listen, in general. I think in general, and this is a, just a comment you were talking about, Marker, just a second. At least you mentioned the name. But anyway. I have to say, I think Markarth gets more flack than Path Mage. I play it. Some people don't fucking kill the Path really? Mage and whatever. I swear to God, man. Like I, more often than not, I never ever played a card that gets as much immediate removal as Markarth ever. Like every well, time I play it, it gets fair, killed because like it's <laughs> every it's time not I play as it, dead. it's not as it's not played as often now, but like. If you've ever had someone swing with it against you and get those two free extra firebrands, and they're going to be running, you know, supports of some kind or, like, Orc Clan captains to make them, like, free damage for zero, going back to the whole, you know, no magicka for, like, damage or whatever. What was that? Um, then you know you have to take it out. Like, you can't just leave it on board. It's one of those cards you mentioned, like, certain cards that you, you can't just leave, like, the guy that gives a dagger to other people or oh yeah you don't yeah you only lose that one cards you yeah you, you just can't leave it out there like it's not a not an option if you want to win or if you're gonna win you have to win like yesterday yes yeah one thing that's also that i find appealing about playing aggro is like finding like sneaky lethals that your opponent and even you might not think you like were gonna be able to find or like kind of like when you do go into that mode where the game is stretched out past the point where you're supposed to kind of be able to win to like somehow just hang on and like get that top deck after you've like shackled their drain creature two turns in a row and then silenced it and then you finally draw like the ice spike into like you know the um vigilante or whatever it is that you needed to win like that is a very very satisfying thing, even though it's kind of reliant on luck somewhat, I guess. But some people would have just conceded or whatever, like, and it's a matchup <laughs> you're probably not supposed to win or whatnot. Well, being fucking stubborn, Shadow. <laughs> I don't think many people would accuse me of not being stubborn <laughs> that know me. Definitely stubborn. Most people are. I mean, so yeah, like. Earlier in my legend, you know, legends career, I had this view of like control as like all control is, you know, like greedy and, you know, like kind mm. of overpowered and toxic and whatnot, which is not the case, but like, so that control led is, me all control to is be greedy. like, I mean, to an extent, I am going. I am going to, like, cleanse the ladder of this filth. I'm going to make decks that, like, beat them on turn four, and, like, they're going to rethink their life. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you know, it's my bias or whatnot, like, thinking that I'm, like, you know, uh, Batman who's cleaning up Gotham City or whatever. Okay, like, yeah, calm down the there. Off the ladder. <laughs> hey, I'm fully admitting that, yeah. you know, this is, like, a mental phase that I went through um, in this game and like not accurate but
Dude, Clivia Tharn is actually such a good card. I don't know if people realize how good of a card she is. It doesn't matter if you're on aggro need, empire or aggro I needed control. My fucking... You should run Clivia Tharn. I needed my fucking... Any buff, Fear. any buff bef no, any buff before made those like hirelings were perfect. Yeah, that's I cool. needed some sort of like I need some some. Also, didn't didn't help that he didn't give me any. Well, okay. <laughs> Do we want to move on to talking about any particular specific deck matchups and like how to beat certain decks or anything related to that? Or I don't even remember what it was about clans that we had talked about talking about, but I wanted to do, but I, I didn't know what my internet shit it shit the bed for ten minutes. No, but like I'm talking like last week or sometime that one day when we were talking about topics, there was actually some stuff that somehow was related to clans that I feel like I remember wanted to. That we wanted to talk about, but I could be just tripping. Probably just about the whole like deck, different perspective than just yourself. You're not like super. I don't know if you're not active with your friends list and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you're like, oh man, I have this awesome idea for a deck, but it's not working. I'm like, I like to be like that guy on friends list that ask about. This. Like, not everybody has that to help them with a deck. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> like, like, in that regard, I think clans are very useful. Like, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think that it should be, like, like stupid, like, elite things. Like, it really is. Obviously, people are all looking for the best and whatever, but today it's, like, a of a It's about a community. A clan, like, you know what I mean? It's about or like a more tight knit them. community than just like the whole legends community at large. Like the community, it's a community I, within really... a community. <laughs> Absolutely, and like we haven't really necessarily that I remember talked about all the different clans that are out there, which I think is so cool. Like there's actually a lot of people in like the FR clan that I've matched recently, and like there's the Fun honor clan, which FR, I'm not very. FR and MPO basically are made like. That's awesome. I I'm not very familiar with any of the people in the Honor Clan, but that's definitely one that has multiple players. I don't know how many are in Gods with Juno, but then there's like Friends that has a you know has some people in it as well. Like and then the big ones that are probably more well known for having more members are like NPO and AZZ. But um, I think it's so cool that there's that many clans in a game that's not in development, and most of them have people that are still playing, if not, like, overly active in Discord or whatnot, like. We even did a clan battle against some clan that I don't think is very active anymore. I can't even remember what their tag or name was, but, like. For, like, Blood Warrior Guild? Maybe. Yeah, I think it was. WG? Yes, I think it was. I just had Merlin log, log in, so. Um. Up to I have the rest of the storm. Actually, used to. That's right. Yeah, I had him on my old account, and now I don't have him on this one. But I don't even know. I haven't seen him on. I haven't matched him in since my break from the game. But how dare you, uh, shrewd <laughs> strategist! All of those firebrands. That is not going to be good for me. Uh, this is pretty fucking. You're in trouble. We shall see. I'm probably in trouble, though. Because, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't draw overly great, and, like, some of the cards in this deck are only... You're only going to play them if you've actually played anything, <laughs> and you didn't at first. Yeah, that's the thing I find with those like the reactionary cards like Murkwater Witch and stuff like that. You feel bad to open up sometimes because your opponent doesn't play yes. anything. But there and you're like, well, I'm not mm -hmm. gonna play it. 
But the nice thing is, like, I normally, when I'm on my normal decks, I feel like I have to play no matter what. Like, I have to play creatures out there and start doing things. Um, But with decks like this, like, you can actually skip a turn and it's not like the end of the world, especially if your opponent is doing so. What do you think you're doing with all this nonsense, all these shenanigans? I demand that you cease and desist. Man, I wish I, I wish I could get that guy down one more health. And then this would be awesome. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I was so close to wiping that guy too, but How dare you play Divine Fervor? You know what I wish would happen when you remove when you remove Fervor? I wish that people at one health would go down to zero. Yeah, no, that's rough, eh? Wouldn't that be <clears throat> wouldn't that be cool? Uh, I mean, I feel like that's actually like a an effect of Fervor that doesn't get talked about. Is that like? I hate that. No, 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 no. no it's it's it's, it's something that has that a, it's something like, that has affected a lot of games. And not in your favor? Yeah, not in How dare you play another one? I had two of them. Those are some beefy fired brands. I mean, luckily you just had that first. I added a card that I think you will approve of me having added to this, which is Ash Berserker, by the way. I don't know that that's one that I don't know that that's one you um ex I didn't uh, suggest I didn't advise. suggest it but that's yeah, definitely a good card for you to too. add. Definitely a good. What do we want to do here? What do we want to do? What did you say? I said, give, give me you cards. cards. No. Yeah, give me cards. Why would I? <laughs> why would I do that? That's the last thing I want to do. There's that berserker. I was just. I figured you had it in your. Hand. It was obvious. Yeah, it was obviously in my hand. Why else would I randomly bring that? A serious match. We're not. Even if we met on ladder, it's not like it matters. But this is just a friendly. But there's pride on the line. Do you think this deck, like, compared to my usual stuff, is actually, like, as cool or different as I think it is? I feel like you are putting a little more stock in the whole Oh, not different from like here. other people but like different from like the stuff i ever recently have ever like made that you have seen or seen me on or whatnot i i don't know it feels like a lot of my decks are just a pile of good stuff because i am committed to making them like ladder viable but they lack that kind of like spicy flare of like oh gosh um of like you know synergy and like um sometimes of like synergy and just like not a lot of people are running that particular kind of like deck or whatnot my goodness all my health just went away yeah it's a shame that i did all of it i have host carl in hand and i couldn't really get now he's just i think it's worth it <laughs> I hope it. I am like one magicka away from something that would be useful to me. I don't know if I really have a way out of this. I'm two magicka away from like Crusader's Assault and Unstoppable Rage. You're not going to get two more turns. <laughs> no. 
I'm one magic away from ravenous hunger and unstoppable rage. I don't know if I've got a way out of this. If I just play rage on belly G, it's not going to really do anything because you have so much health on those darn zero cost firebrands. Yeah, you're going to give me. You're going to give absolutely me wild. Oh, I mean, that doesn't even matter at this point. I have to like do something, but yeah, I think this is uh, not looking so hot. I don't think I would have did the whole play if I didn't think just having house current make sure that I could and that's a pretty wild draw that you had. Yeah, well, it was two raiding parties, two shrewd strategists. Insane. That's like the dream for that deck. The only way it could have been better is if I had like this mother. Basically, got the call. I just got slapped. But I mean. What happened there isn't going to happen to me very often, I don't think, on that, like... Yeah, even with this, like, particular matchup, I don't... A high roll hand. Which does happen, but, like, not super often. When it not does, for it me versus really... you, anyway, wow. fuck! <laughs> usually <laughs> well, it's the other way does, around. It's usually the other way around, yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm feeling a wee bit tired, but maybe our viewers or listeners will be glad to know that we're actually going to do two episodes this week. Yeah. We'll have another one of these <clears throat> things cooking on Friday. Yeah, so basically the day is going to, I don't know, you tell them, because that's a you. Yeah, so on, on Friday, on Friday it closes early, false advertising, calling themselves 24-hour fitness. Um because they don't stay open 24 hours on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday now, I guess. But what does it like the so three I days was... you think that they would be 24 hours? <laughs> I don't know, dude. So yeah, I'm going to go Monday through Thursday now, unless we're doing two episodes during the week. In which case, we'll do a second one on one of those days. But Friday will be the main day now, if that's not an issue for you or anyone else. It doesn't bother me at all. Cool beans. That'll definitely work better for me, and I can stay in shape while also creating awesome Legends content and telling people that they should... Telling people how awesome I am. should be like that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> telling people what that Redoran guy says when you his like voice line, like, I would rather die than see House Redoran Dishonored, but we change it to, I would rather die than play Workshop or see other people play Workshop. Yeah, fucking, I just try to spread the message that you guys don't need to fucking use it. Uh, actually, I should have fucking linked it. it in, I should have linked it in the last video, but like I gave Sly Boogie that no neutral deck that does. Fucking, he made a video of him like that is a wreck. Yeah, you don't need it. Like, there's no deck that is like I don't know. I don't want to even get into it and get all worked up, but like if you feel like you can't win without Workshop, add me as a friend, and yeah, I we, will give you a we'll, lot we'll of decks. We'll talk about it. Yeah. I'll give you a lot of decks that you can win with um, without using Workshop. workshop. A-Ross could do the same for you. There's lots of people that could help you out. Also, definitely. Well, shall we call it a uh, call it a night? Uh, if you're going to do a thing and... I don't, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but, like, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, like, I got, like, three hours of sleep all three of those nights. That's rough. Um, just, like, the circadian... I'm the used circadian to doing stupid difference. shit like that, but you're not. Right. I'm certainly not. <laughs> yeah, trying to switch from, like, working at night to, like, getting up early in the morning for, like, military training did not go well. Plus, my wife and my son were, like, coughing, like, during the night, like, all night and whatnot. It's just, like, rough. Okay. Yeah, they were. They had a cold or something, like, going back and forth between them. <laughs> so, 
Saturday mm-hmm. and Sunday night, I got a normal night of sleep, but I haven't fully caught up yet. So take a I while. will sign off for tonight. All right, man. Well, take her easy. I'll talk to you. Well, I mean, I'll talk to you. Stuff, but we'll do another we'll yeah. link up again on Friday. Probably around the on same Friday. time. Friday. Eh? Sounds like a plan. Is that like the Thanks for having me. It'll be. Like, Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Because I can't even go to the gym that night after. I can't go to the gym that night after work, so I'll just come straight home. All right, this is uh, Shadow Azz signing off of the life lessons and advice with uh, Ross and Shadow. Just don't forget, kids. Don't play workshop. Tesla talks. Which episode was this, by the way? Like six or seven or something. Yeah, I think it's... Cool beans. I keep it going. All right, bro. I'll catch you later. Later. Eustace, thank you for the resub, by the way. I didn't want to... Yeah, no, thanks for the resub, dude. That's much appreciated. Yeah, it was like, kind of that crap. Oh, fuck.